Hello everyone and welcome to Spirit of God Christian Church's virtual worship service. Whether you are new online or have been joining us for a while now, we want to say thank you. It's your continued support to the ministry that allows us to bring you this broadcast each week. Like and share this message online and across all of your social media platforms. Download the church's app to stay connected with us. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find all Spirit of God Christian Church media content. At any time during the service, feel free to drop a comment in the chat, say hello to your church family, or simply say amen. Whether virtual or in person, we want to share God's word with his people. I have a few brief announcements coming your way. Then, Spirit of God, let's get ready for another spirit-filled worship service. Join us for in-person service every first and second Sunday at 10 a.m. at the Doubletree Hilton Roswell Hotel. Join us for Zoom Bible study each Thursday night at 7 p.m. Remember, questions are always welcome, and be sure to invite someone to dive into the Word of God with you. Good morning and welcome to Spirit of God Christian Church. I'm Deacon Ed Jeffrey and today we just want to welcome you to Spirit of God Christian Church if this happens to be your first time visiting us virtually. We want you to know that we don't take your presence for granted, but we do want you to also know you're going to be blessed. Blessed from the beginning of the service to the end of the service. And as we enter into corporate prayer, we're going to start out by reading from Revelation chapter 4 verse 11 and it reads this way from the King James Version. It says, Thou art worthy, O Lord. I'll stop right there. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to be praised. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to be worshiped. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure they are and were created. Thank you for that word, Lord. That word tells us that we owe our very creation to the will of God. Our very existence is here to praise Almighty God. Oh, what it feels good to just wake you up in the morning and, and know that, 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 that he woke you up just for his pleasure. That he set your, your feet on solid ground for his pleasure. That the air that you're breathing through your nostrils right now, you're breathing for his pleasure. Doesn't it feel good that, that the plans that he has for you is for his pleasure? Lord, I just want to thank you, almighty God, that, that everything that's been created, praise you, almighty God. He says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. From the highest flying bird to the the lowest creature in the depths of the earth. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And today I want to talk to you about this, this, this temple that he's given us for his pleasure and how we have a tendency sometimes to, to misuse it for our pleasure. How we have a tendency to, to put more food into this temple than we should for our pleasure. How we have a tendency to put more drink into this temple for our pleasure. And how we have a tendency to, to lend our bodies out to others outside of the will of God for our pleasure. And I'm here to tell you today, it doesn't have to be that way. For we have a loving God. We have a forgiving God who tells us very right in this verse, it's for his pleasure that we are existing in this world today. And right now, there's someone out there that's contemplating their very existence on this earth today. They're contemplating why they were born in the first place. They're contemplating why they look the way they look. They're contemplating why they feel unbalanced. And we wanna pray for them corporately today. Can we do that? For we want them to know that God loves them. And they are precious. And they do have a purpose. 
And that purpose is to serve the will of God through his pleasure. Amen. So let's bow our heads and go before God's throne right now, asking for forgiveness of any misuse of the temples that he's put us in responsibility for. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today, Lord. We thank you for that mighty word of remembrance that our very existence here today is owed to you, that we were purchased at a price for your pleasure, dear Lord. We thank you, almighty God, that you've given us a second chance to do right by you, dear Father God, to do right by your will. And right now, we just want to come before you, dear Lord, humbly asking for forgiveness of all of those sins that are not of you, dear Father God, those sins that are committed by omission or commission, dear Father God, and that special sin of the misuse of the temple that you've given us to take care of, dear Father God. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Help us to right our, our ways, dear Father God, and understand that the purpose for us being here today is to praise you, is to honor you, is to worship you, almighty God, and to do your will, dear Lord, all for your pleasure, and we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you help us to deny ourselves, dear Father God. And treat our temples, dear Lord, with respect. To be used by you. To bless others. And right now, dear Father God, we lift up those individuals before you right now that are contemplating their very existence here. They're lost right now, dear Lord. They, they're lost. They haven't found their way, dear Lord. They haven't, quote, found their purpose. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you bless them. Bring peace to their spirits, dear Lord. Touch them in a mighty way like only you can, dear Father God. Surround them with your angels and with people of like kind, like loving Christians, dear Father God, that remind them that they are loved. And allow them to be, to be reach out, dear Father God, to reach out and ask for help, dear Lord, not to be shut up and shut in, dear Lord. We ask that in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we just ask that you bless this service today, dear Father God. We ask that you bless Minister Derek Madison, dear Father God, as he brings the word forth, dear Lord. We thank you for what you've placed in his spirit, and we anxiously await to hear the word, dear Father God. We ask that it lands on fertile ground, dear Lord. We thank you, Almighty God, that our pastor gets time away. Bless him and his family, dear Father God. Protect them. We thank you, dear Father God, for every area of the service, every ministry that a hand had a hand in putting it together, dear Lord, from the ministry, music ministry, We thank you, Almighty God, from, for the media team. We thank you, Lord, just for all of the hands that are involved in bringing this service forward. We trust you, dear Father God, and we, we ask you to take care of each and every one of us as we place these prayers before you. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning, Spirit of God Christian Church. I'm Pastor Randall Knighton, Pastor of Spirit of God Christian Church, and I just want to thank Deacon Ed for that marvelous corporate prayer. I know that I normally don't come to you at this time, but today uh, we have someone special that's going to bring the word forth to you, and I'm so excited about that. I'm so grateful uh, to have those that God has equipped this church with who can handle the word of God correctly, rightly divide the word of truth, and bring a word of encouragement a word of empowerment and a word that will enlighten us in our walk with Jesus Christ. And that this morning is going to be the Reverend Derek Madison. But before I uh, bring him to you, one of the things I wanted to make sure I do is just cover a couple of housekeeping issues. I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in to Spirit of God Christian Church this morning. And uh, if you are, as Deacon Ed says, your first time, welcome. And we are so grateful we don't take your presence for granted. For those of you who have continued to be and are members, uh, whether in person or virtual, I just can't thank God enough for you for your continued support 
of the ministry and the work that we do in the name of Jesus. And so again, I also just a couple of quick housekeeping issues. I want to remind everybody that we are meeting on first and second Sundays in person, but we're every Sunday virtual. And so we thank God for a wonderful media team that allows us to be able to handle that, not only virtually, but when we're in person as well. So the next time that um, if you're in the local area, Lord willing, I'll get an opportunity to see you in person if you would come out and worship with us but you may also worship virtually as well and i understand with some rises in some numbers there may be cause and concern for some so certainly we're going to continue with the virtual broadcast but that'll be in person august the 7th and august the 14th uh, at the double tree in roswell and so i look forward to seeing you all there as well as we continue with bible study each and every thursday night i pray that you just tune in and their um, bible study from this past thursday is up on youtube now and you can go back and listen to some of the archive Bible studies from uh, really since January when we started putting them up on, up on YouTube. And so I'm thankful for the media team for that additional uh, work that they've done to the Lord and, and done such a marvelous job with that as well. Also want to give a special thanks to our brother Antonio Newman, who did a marvelous job uh, once again with men's ministry uh, on this past Saturday. And may God continue to bless him. And again, he's having some really busy weeks, but yet still continues to, to pour out uh, what the Lord has shared with him for our men. Now, today, again, I know, uh, you know, one of the great blessings of a pastor is to be able to have people who will stand in the gap, who can deliver the word, who takes a load off of you, who holds his arms up uh, just as they did uh, in the days of Moses. And today, Reverend Derek Madison, who is a true man of God, a true servant, I said this in the in-person service, jokingly, but true. If servanthood were a town, Derek Madison would be mayor. And he is a servant of the highest level. I thank God for him. He is an ordained minister here at Spirit of God Christian Church. And while I certainly will claim him to be a, a son in ministry, but he has helped me in so many different ways. But truly, uh, we thank God for his parents, uh, Pastor Earl and Lady Joyce Madison of Agape Temple down in Orlando, Florida, who have certainly raised up a mighty warrior in the Lord. He's been on this broadcast before, brought you the word before, and today will be no different. He will bring you truly a word from the Lord that will encourage uh, and empower each and every one of us. So today, after the song, uh, again, I thank our music ministry in advance, but after the song, the next voice that you will hear will be that of a true servant, a true man of God, Reverend Derek Madison, who also serves as a deacon here, and you've seen him on corporate prayer. But today he steps in the role to deliver what thus saith the Lord to his people. Pray for him, and it is our prayer that the anointing of God will be heavy upon him to deliver a mighty word from, him, from God through him to each and every one of us. Reverend Derek Madison, hear ye him after the song. Amen and amen. Center of my life, 
Jesus at the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it will always be, always be you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will. Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you. Jesus, you at the center of it all. At the center of it all. the center of our church. Jesus, be the center of our church. Oh, from beginning to the end, it will always be, always be you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you. Jesus, you at the center. Well, praise God, Jesus at the center of it all. I love that song. It goes on to say, Jesus be the center of my life. Don't you want Jesus to be the center of your life? Jesus to be the center of my relationships? Jesus be the center of my focus. Jesus be the center of my thoughts. Jesus just be the center of it all. When we know Jesus is the center of it all, we know everything will be all right, amen. Well, good morning, everyone. As pastor has already said, I'm Derek Madison and I'm here to deliver what I believe is a word from the Lord. I believe this will be a word that will bless us along with a word that will challenge us. At least I know it challenged me as I prepared for this message on today. So I thank God for each of you. I thank God for the opportunity to share God's word. And I don't take this for granted. I don't take it lightly, but I understand the seriousness of sharing God's word with God's precious people. Uh, Cece, thank you so much for just sharing that song with us. It, it just blessed us, and uh, I just pray that you were blessed by the worship song. You ministered so wonderfully there. Uh, I thank God, and I want to give honor to our pastor, who is just such a blessing, and our first lady. You know, they are such a blessing uh, as leaders, as counselors, as uh, just all that God has called them to do in ministry. I just thank God for them, and I pray God's blessings upon them. You know, they are... Uh, not only spiritual leaders, but they have the responsibility of leading God's people, God's flock, and that's not something to be taken lightly. So let's be sure and lift them up in prayer. I'm going to make sure we, we pray for them. Uh, I tell you, God just loves us. He loves you and I so much that, you know what? He said, I'm going to give you a pastor after my own heart, one that would feed you, one that would love on you, one that would take care of you like a shepherd. And I just thank God for a pastor and a first lady who is like that. I uh, thank God for again for each of you. And I want to give a special thanks and just a shout out uh, to my wife. I thank God for Lisa. Uh, she's just such a blessing in my life. Uh, 31 years, y'all. She's hung in there with me. We just celebrated 31 years of marriage and I thank God for that. Uh, and then I uh, just want to give a special shout out not only to our music ministry, 
but to our amazing media ministry. Thank you so much for what you do day in, day out, week in and week out. You really make us look good. And I just want to thank you for that. Uh, and then uh, as Pastor already uh, talked about, I thank God for my parents, uh, my mother and father. Uh, and the reason why is because not only are they uh, pastors and, and my parents, and I just thank God for them, but they are connected to Spirit of God Christian Church. They pray for us. They pray for our leaders. They pray for each of you. And I just thank God for them. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and pray. And then we'll get right into the word for today. Uh, before I do pray, I do want to go back, though, and just... Uh, just thank Deacon Ed. And I tell you, brother, all I can say is you tapped in. I thank God for leading and guiding and directing you to minister to us in corporate prayer on today. I tell you, you tapped in right with where we're going with the message on today. And I just thank you for being obedient to you, to God and, and just letting him use you during corporate prayer. Uh, so uh, we'll go ahead and pray and then we'll get into the word that God has for us on today. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you and we praise you for this day. God, we know that this is truly the day you have made. And Father, we rejoice and we are glad in it. Father, I just pray right now as I humble myself under your mighty hand. Father, I pray that your anointing, God, that your power, that your presence would rest heavy within this service. God, I pray that whatever is said, Father, it will be for the edification of your body. Father, I pray right now that your people will be blessed. Father, that we'll hear your word and not only be hearers of your word, that we'll be doers of your word. Father, I pray that some soul will be saved, that will listen to your word and just say, what must I do to be saved. What must I do to change my life? And Father, we'll give you praise in advance. We'll give you glory and we'll give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I ask that you pray with me as uh, we deliver the word of God for today. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start right off. We'll start in Matthew and I'm going to start with the 21st chapter. And I'm going to read two verses there. The first one is found, uh, or the first verse uh, is chapter, or verse 12, and then we'll read verse 13. We'll pretty much stick with that, and we'll go with a few other verses as we go throughout uh, the message on today. But Matthew 21, verse 12, and it reads like this. Then Jesus went into the temple of God. If we were in person, I'd say somebody say the temple of God. And drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. Verse 13 says, and he said to them, it is written. I remember uh, reading, he said that to Satan as well when uh, he was tempted in the wilderness, he said to Satan, it is written. But he said unto the thieves or to the, uh, those who had were doing what they shouldn't be doing in the house of God. He said, it is written. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. He said, but you have made it a den of thieves. And so our thought for today is actually going to come from that verse, verse 13, where he says, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of thieves. So our thought for today is beware of the den of thieves in your temple. Beware of the den of thieves in our temple. You know, Jesus, as he entered into his house, because it was his house, he went in there expecting to see what is normally found within the house of God, a place of hope and healing and prayer. Mainly at that time, he, it was prayer because he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. But when he entered into the house, he said what he found was a den of thieves. And so I'm gonna talk as we go on throughout the day about how our temple should be and how the enemy tries to make our temple a den of thieves. 
In 1 Corinthians, the third chapter in the 16th verse, and I'll read from the New King James Version, it says this, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? Verse 17, it says, If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. There is a direct connection, as we see here, with the physical building, the temple, with us being the temple found in 1 Corinthians. And then in 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, in the 19th verse, it says this, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. These two verses really tell us that there is a connection that exists not only with the physical building, but also the personhood of you and I being the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And there's a seriousness also that's found in the word that lets us know not only are we the temple of God, but the Holy Spirit dwells in us when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And not only are we the temple of God, but God desires that all the attributes of the physical temple found in Matthew 21, where God's presence would dwell, where there be a house of prayer, where there's joy and peace, love and healing and so on. God desires that all of that operates within our temple it's interesting that the first thing that Jesus did upon entering the temple, his house, is that he first dealt with everything and everyone that interfered with his house being called a house of prayer. He dealt with everyone that was conducive to it being a den of thieves. Yes, we know that Jesus is the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Yes, he is truly the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. But make no mistake, Jesus is also the Lion of Judah. He's also the King of Kings. He's also the Lord of Lords. And when he went into that temple, he dealt with the people who were treating it as the den of thieves. You know, when I go back and, and read that, it makes me think about, you know, when we were growing up, and you know how you'd have people talking all kinds of noise, just talking, talking about what they can do, what they're going to do. And really, you didn't even worry about those people because you knew they were just all talk. But then you had those that were just quiet. They were all action. And you knew not to mess with those folks. And when I think about that in the context of Jesus when he entered the temple, it says this, when Jesus entered the temple, you know what? It didn't say that he exchanged any words. He didn't talk about why you were here. He didn't discuss what you were doing. He didn't discuss the problem. J the Bible says that Jesus cast out, he drove out, he put out, and he overturned everything and everyone that was contrary to his house being called a house of prayer. The ones who had made it a den of thieves, Jesus dealt with them. He dealt with them as the King of Kings. He dealt with them as the Lord of Lords. He dealt with them as the owner of that house. Beware of the den of thieves in your temple. You and I, we have to stand firm against the wiles of the devil. We know that the word of God tells us that. We know that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Bible tells us there in Ephesians 6 in the 13th chapter that we should take on to us the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand within the evil day and having done all to stand. How many of us know that just because we stand doesn't mean the enemy is going to leave us alone? The enemy desires to make the temple of God a place 
for a den of thieves. And I'm not here to glorify the devil at all, but I'm here to point out some things that we know he's trying to do because we know he's insidious, we know he's crafty, and we know what he's looking to try to do with God's people. But I'm here to tell you, it won't work. You know, the Bible tells us in John 10:10, 10, 10, it says that the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said what? He said it at the end of that, he said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So what are you saying here, Derek? You've, you've said a lot so far, but what are you saying? I'm gonna establish just a couple of things here. We've established so far that you and I are identified according to 1 Corinthians as the temple of God, both collectively as the body of believers that make up the church and individually as the body of Christ. We have, we've established that our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost or the temple of the Holy Spirit. We've established that God's house shall be called a house of prayer. And we've established that we are to protect and guard against anything and everything that comes against our temple being called a house of prayer. A question for you and I, what is preventing our temple from being called a house of prayer? A place where Christ is welcomed, a place where his spirit abides, a place where peace abides, a place where there's communion with the Father, a place where the, where the Holy Spirit can dwell and commune and speak with us. What is preventing us from being called that house of prayer? What is our den of thieves? What is it that we have to be aware of? God gave me seven areas that I'm going to speak about to look where the enemy would try to come in and infiltrate God's house, his temple, and make it a den of thieves. And the first one is found within the word time, T for time. God desires to spend time with us and not just any old time. He desires to spend quality time with you and I. Time that's uninterrupted, time where he can just commune with us, time where he can just talk to us, time where he can just hear from us and just we just talk and the communion and the conversation is so good. The time where, he, where we show him that he is most important in our lives, time where we show him that he is the priority in our lives. And I know that we all desire this. I know we desire to do that. But what happens so often is that life gets in the way. It seems like when we, we get up, we have the best intentions in the morning to spend time with our Lord and Savior. But then we're rushed in the morning. And then throughout the day, we seem to be so busy that one thing leads to another and we have meetings and taking care of kids and doing this and doing that. And before we know it, it's the evening time. And while we want to just be able to spend that evening time, uh, not only with our families, but spend that time with God, what happens is pretty soon the day is over and we're tired and we've gone to bed and perhaps we didn't spend any time with God. The enemy is tricky here. He tries to get us being busy about the cares of life. I know with me, that happens. It seems like from the time I wake up until the time my head hits the pillow, I'm busy. I'm running from here to there. I'm busy with work, busy with taking care of my home, busy with being a father, busy with being a husband. There's so much that's going on within my life. Am I really taking out the time to be with God that he desires? Have I made him a priority in my life? Or do I just simply run out of time? I would encourage you and I to make time with God a priority. You know why? Because God makes priority time for us. And I would just even say this, that's a trick of the enemy. It's slick. It's where he just keeps you busy, maybe even doing good things, but before you know it, the den of thieves have happened with our time. The second area is with our health. The enemy desires to steal our health. 
our physical health, our mental health, our spiritual health, our emotional health. It seems like every chance he gets, he's attacking our mind, he's attacking our body, he's attacking the, our families, he's after our health. In the area of our physical health, we find ourselves so worn out from just doing things that we put everything else aside and before we know it, we're worn out. We find ourselves putting our physical health last. And I'll just say this, even as men, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we try and go uh, all day long. We try and go, you know, year after year. And sometimes we don't even check in with our own doctors, our own personal physicians, just as a wellness check to make sure that everything is going on. That's a trick of the enemy. He tries to get us off course because if he can attack our health, then he begins to attack our mind. When he attacks our mind, he, gets, he begins to attack, attack our emotions and our will and everything else that goes along with that. So he tries to attack not only our time, but he also looks to attack our health. Not only our physical health, not only our mental health, not only our emotional health, but also our spiritual health. We find that we go to give out, we give so much, we give here, we give there from a spiritual perspective. We give so much until we give out and we don't take the time to get into God's presence, to refill and to be filled. We just give out, we give out, we give out. And uh, you know how it is when you're driving in your car and that light comes on, that, that low fuel light, or our spiritual low fuel light comes on and we just keep going and we keep going and we say we'll, we'll fill up when we get time. But remember, time has already been stolen away and we end up attacking people, snapping at people, doing things because the enemy has attacked our spiritual health. He's attacked our physical health. He's attacked our emotional health. We have to remain full spiritually. We have to remain stable mentally and we have to remain calm emotionally and then healthy physically. That's where we're complete in every area of our lives so that when the enemy shoots his fiery darts, and I'm telling you, he will shoot his fiery darts. He'll shoot darts of emotional despair. He'll shoot darts of, of just not being good enough, darts of inadequacy. He'll shoot darts of past failures. Uh, he'll shoot darts of whatever it may be that just really will come to try and infiltrate and, and attack our mind. But we have to do like Ephesians say, put on the whole armor of God so that we can stand against the wiles of the devil. The Bible tells us that we should put on the helmet, I'm sorry, the shield of faith so that we can quench what? All of the fiery darts of the enemy. Beware of the den of thieves in your temple. The next area is with our integrity. I know our brother Edgar talked on this last Sunday. The enemy, I'm telling you, is after the integrity of the saints. He knows that the world is watching us as representatives of Christ. And even though we should always point others to Christ, we have to guard against accusations and wrongdoing. We have to protect the integrity of who we represent and that is Christ. Colossians 3.23, it tells us this, that whatever we do, we should do it as unto the Lord, regardless of who's watching, regardless of who's around, regardless of what's going on, we should operate in everything we do as if we're doing it unto the Lord, because we are. And as Edgar shared last week, God is always watching. You know, that was just such a powerful example that he shared last week about, uh, you know, how he had cut his neighbor's yard and cut his yard. And there was grass clippings. If you didn't hear this, I encourage you to go back and listen to it because I won't do it justice. But there was grass clippings on the sidewalk, both in front of his house and his neighbor's house. And Edgar did a good job. He swept up his yard and it was looking all nice and neat. The grass clippings in the other person's yard, he said, oh, the wind will blow it. But God dealt with him on that and talked about how God was watching. And he talked about the integrity in what we do. And, you know, that really just stuck with me. And, and the reason why is because as saints of God, as Christians, we know this is a world of, of social media. People are always watching and we are always at any time bound to end up on video. So just imagine this. 
Edgar's wearing his Spirit of God Christian Church t-shirt. He blows and takes care of his yard and then pushes the, the clippings over to the other person's yard and they catch him wearing his Spirit of God Christian Church outfit. What kind of witness is that? Oh, I'm not going to stop with you, Edgar. I'm going to talk about me. I'm wearing my God is Love brand. And by the way, those shirts fit so well. But I'm wearing my God is Love brand t-shirt. You know, I'm, I'm all out in public, maybe at Walmart, maybe at Home Depot, wherever it is I may be. And I see, you know, one of them girls walk by. And what I do, turn my head and look at, the, look at the lady from the time she comes out of her car to the time she enters the parking lot. Wearing my God is Love brand. What kind of witness is that? What kind of integrity is that? But I'm not going to stop at just me. Now, come on, I'm going to talk about you ladies. Come on, the brother walks in. 6'2", 220, just like you like him. Looking good, smelling good. You can't keep your eyes and thoughts off of him. You're also wearing your God is Love brand shirt. What kind of witness is that? We have to guard against integrity. We have to protect our integrity because, because here, here it is. God knows our thoughts. God knows our intents. He knows our motives. I'm telling you, the enemy is sly and he's slick. And he, what he'll do is he'll put us on blast. He'll say, see there, that's what the Christians are doing. That's what God's people are doing. So that's why we have to be careful to guard against our integrity. Beware of the den of thieves that will come against your integrity. As I said before, he's insidious and he wants to steal our integrity to make the wrong decision at the right time. The next one is around our economics. And I'll say this, the E for economics. First off, let's be clear. The enemy is the thief. He comes to steal. We know that. He's going to steal. He's going to try and kill and he's going to try and destroy. But he wants to steal. Thieves steal. That's what they do. He wants to take advantage of others and he looks for ways to take what doesn't belong to him. And we have to be aware how the enemy tries to be slick with getting into our economics. And I don't just mean financially, but it also does include our finances. You know, one thing that we do is we pray for provision. We pray to be good stewards over what, good stewards, sorry, over what God blesses us with. And you know what? I think for the most part, we, we are. But we know there are areas that we all have to shore up with being good stewards over what God provides for us. But, you know, I, I think about this and, I, and I'm going to talk about me. You know, back in the day, you know, when, uh, you know, Lisa and I, we were, you know, newly married or early in our marriage. And, you know, the kids were young and, you know, things were tight. I'm, I mean, things were they were tighter than tight. And, you know, I didn't didn't pay my bill with the first notice. You know, whatever the, you can call out the bill, the utility bills or whatever. We weren't going to pay it with our first with the first notice when it came in the mail. We may not even pay it with the second notice. Now, when we get that cutoff notice, okay, we're going to move some things around. We're going to make it happen. We're going to pay that bill. But then in the by and by, as we begin to learn about the things of God, we begin to be tithers and be givers, and we begin to just be obedient to God's word, and God begin to bless us. And then came the come up. You know, the Lord began to bless us. He blessed us on our jobs. And, you know, we began to just move up and, and income began to increase. And God just blessed us. He increased our lives. And I give him all the glory for it now. Uh, but, you know, during that time, you know, as things begin to get better and things begin to get easier, it seemed financially, you know, we get that first notice. We pay that bill in the first notice. But all then on the next level come up, we set up you know, where the bill comes in, automatic bill pay. We don't even need to see the bill. And then we begin to, I'm not going to say we, I'm not going to put her in this, I'll say me. You know, I begin to look at the provision as being the provision and not the provider as being my provision. You see, the enemy is slick. He doesn't even mind you getting a little something just to get your attention off off of God, the one who is the provider, that you start looking at the things and the provision. But God quickly, he quickly showed me that it is he, it is God who gives me the power to get wealth. 
There is not one thing that you and I can do in and of ourselves apart from him. We, we can't earn a penny without God. And once we do earn it, it all belongs to him anyway. But the enemy would try to have us be selfish with the economics that God provides for us so that he can make that a den of thieves. But we're gonna call him out today. You know, that's just another area in which he tries to uh, infil infiltrate us to make that be a den of thieves. Beware of the den of thieves within your economics. And then we'll look at these last three together. The V, the E, and the S stands for victory, it stands for eternity, and it stands for salvation. The enemy, and again, I'm not glorifying him, but what I want to do is call out some things. I want to identify some things that I know he's trying to do to get God's people off, off of what God has for us. We heard last week, we heard last week about, about, you know, normalizing sin is not a win. You know, he tries to get us bound in sin, but you know what, we're calling him out. So the V for victory, the enemy will use whatever he can to steal our victory or keep us from living victoriously in God. And we have to guard against that. We have to guard against our own sinful desires. You know, the Bible tells us that the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. That's found in 1 John. But how many of us know that the enemy will get us off course by attacking us in those areas within the pride of life, within the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. You know, in Joshua, the sixth and seventh chapters, and obviously we won't read all of that, but uh, you know, in the sixth chapter, you know, God uh, gave the children of Israel the victory over Jericho. They didn't have to go in and fight. It was just by God's miraculous hand through their obedience that God gave them the victory over Jericho. And then came the battle of Ai. And many of you know this, Jericho, I mean, the children of Israel shouldn't have really had to fight hard for the victory in Ai. And really what seemingly should have been an easy win, the children of Israel were routed. They were defeated, they were embarrassed. And not only that, but they suffered loss of lives. They had the victory in Jericho, but the enemy said, I'm okay with you having that victory, but you won't get any more. And so what did he do? The Bible tells us in Joshua 7, verse 11, he said that Israel has sinned. He said they violated my covenant. He said, which I commanded them to keep. He said, this is God, he's telling Joshua this. He told him to get up. He said, they have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen. Well, first of all, they've taken. He said, they've stolen and they have lied. And then not only that, he said they kept those devoted things in their own possessions. And then in verse 12, God says this, and this is in the NIV. He said, that is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. He said, he went on to say this. He said, I will not be with you anymore unless you destroy whatever among you is devoted to destruction. See, the enemy knew that, okay, yeah, you got the victory in Jericho, but the enemy knew that if I could just get to the lust of the flesh, if I could just get to the lust of the eyes, if I could just get to the pride of life, and infiltrate what you thought would should be a victory, I'll get you to lose. And what happened in that? Not only was the one who took those devoted things Achan, not only was he killed, his sons, his daughters, his possessions were burned, and the thing that he stolen was also burned. You know, the enemy will try and get us not only to sin, but to hold on to sinful things. And when we do that, God can't bless us. It, it, it almost, it's almost like it just restricts God's hand 
from moving in our life. And what the enemy says is this. He said that last victory will be your last victory. But you know what? We already learned last week, we're not gonna be complacent. We're not gonna allow sin to rule in our bodies, in this temple. We're gonna confess things that need to be confessed. We're gonna get things right before the Lord. We're going to walk up right before him. We're going to continue to make progress day in and day out. We're not gonna allow ourselves to just waddle in sin, but we're gonna come up and we're gonna come out. Why? Because we want to have the victory. The enemy will not steal our victory. That will not be part of his den of thieves. Beware of the den of thieves within your temple. And then the last two is the eternity and salvation. Yes, the enemy, he can't stop us from eternity. We all will have eternity. But what the enemy wants to do is he wants us to face eternity without Christ. He wants us to not have the eternal life that God desires us to have. Eternal life in his presence. Eternity being in the fullness of God, reigning with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He wants us to have sin in our lives to keep us from being, having eternity with God to being doomed to eternity with him in hell. He wants us to compromise like Achan did. Just like we heard last week, he wants us to entertain sin until it's too late. And then finally, he wants to get our salvation. Oh, I know God provided the salvation for us. But what the enemy is after is the assurance, the peace of knowing that you and I are forgiven. You see, we have a savior who's already defeated the enemy. Jesus said he's already defeated the enemy. He's defeated the thief. He said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that. But Jesus again said, I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And we know that abundant life that is found in Christ, if we stay with him, if we stay connected with him, the enemy cannot steal that salvation. So don't let him be insidious. Don't let him sneak in and take your time. Don't let him take your health. Don't let him take your integrity. Don't let him take your economics. Don't let him take your victory. Don't let him have your eternity. And don't give up your salvation. Don't let the enemy set up a den of thieves within your temple. Root him out. Call on the name of God. Come on, we can do this. We know that we have the victory in every area of our lives if we continue to stay with the Lord. Beware of the den of thieves in your temple. Don't allow the enemy to take what should be a house of prayer, the house of God, and turn it into a den of thieves. I pray that this message has just pricked us. Hallelujah. I pray that it's touched your heart. I pray that it has helped us to realize there are some things we have to shore up. There are some things that we have to do differently. I know for me, for me it did. And I just pray that it's a blessing to you. But maybe you've not even accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you don't know that he is truly the way, the truth, and the life. I'm going to pray with you right now that you will come to that realization and then we'll just go ahead and we'll close out the service. Father, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now, God, that your word will not return void. But Father, we pray that your word will accomplish Holy God, the purpose for which it was sent, and it will prosper thereunto. Father, I pray right now, if there is anyone under the sound of my voice, no matter when they listen to this service, Father, if they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, 
if they don't have a relationship with you through Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you will prick their hearts. Father, that you will just bless and minister to them. Father, that they'll realize that they need a Savior. Father, I believe that they will accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, that they will confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and that they will believe in their heart, Father, that you raised him from the dead and that they will walk in salvation. And Father, I just believe that by your Spirit, Father, you will raise them up and that you will bring them out. Father, help us to shore up the areas where we've allowed the enemy to set up and be, be a, just have a den of thieves in our lives. Father, help us to be aware of that and to just come against and guard it right now. And Father, I just pray right now that you will bless your people. Father, we pray over our pastor as he goes to minister, Father, on the assignment that you have for him. Father, that you will just use him mightily. Father, I pray for every person that has listened to this service that you will bless, that you will heal, that you will deliver, and that you will set free, that this house shall be called a house of prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Wow, what a great service and word from the Lord. Whether online or in person, we want to continue bringing these broadcasts. If you would like to support their ministry, you can do so via the church's app or website or cash app. We thank you for taking the time to tune into today's service and hope you were blessed by it. Remember to share with others so that they can be blessed by it too. In a year of trusting God, while we don't know what tomorrow brings, we do know to trust God in all things. Have a blessed week.